we have been blessed. And it, it matters to the Lord and uh, he'll bless it. He, he has already and he's, he, he will continue to as well. Good morning, church. Y'all doing good this morning, everybody? Man, man, I don't know about you, but um, 24 baptisms gets me fired up and excited uh, for all that God is doing in the life of our church. It's an amazing, amazing thing to see, and I'm just so excited for all those decisions that were made today. And if you're watching online, we're so glad that you're watching with us this morning. If it's your first time here, thank you for visiting us today. Hey, can y'all do me a huge favor? Hey, did pa Pastor Mark do an incredible job last week talking about how we can be a part of taking care of vulnerable children and wrapping around uh, foster care? And so we as a campus have actually decided to advocate for a girl named Brianna, and uh, I'm so excited that we get to advocate for her to get adopted. If y'all could do me a huge favor, if you could go to my personal Facebook page, Ryan Sims, if you didn't know my last name, it is Sims, all right? And, and so, hey, you can go to my personal Facebook page and share that, please, because the more people that watch that video, the more likelihood that her forever family finds her. And so thank you so much for doing that for me right now. I appreciate that so, so much. And so as we step into our heart for the house today, I just want to um, share with you um, my journey with High Ridge Church. And so actually before I moved to Mineral Wells, I was at High Ridge Church Fort Worth. Um, I had been on my journey, was being a knucklehead, met my wife, and she was actually attending the Fort Worth campus. And I decided at that point I was going to stop running from my calling and step into what God had for me and to step into ministry. And I began to get discipled. I began to serve. I began, uh, I, I started Bible college. I began getting mentored, taught how to preach, all those good things. And God began to open more doors and more doors for me. And eventually I was to the point where I was the right-hand man in youth ministry and I was preaching once or twice a month, and I was offered a full-time job in facilities, cleaning and stacking chairs and all that good stuff. But whatever I could do to get in the door, I was ready to do. Um, after a while, um, it, my name came up in a conversation that Pastor Dan was having with somebody from the High Ridge campus. And, and my name just came up. And so they talked to me about it. I got a call and I just felt like the Lord was in it. And so I had this dream that was inside of me to be a high ridge son of the house. But then I knew that the Lord was calling me here to Mineral Wells. So uh, I, I went to Pastor Jeff and I said, I feel like the Lord is telling me to do this, but um, I will only leave with your blessing. And in that moment, he told me, you have my blessing, but I want you to do this for me. Leave a spot in your heart for High Ridge Church because you never know what the Lord could do in the future. And so that was prophetic, and neither one of us knew it in the moment. And I held on to that because I had this desire. And so I came to uh, Mineral Wells, and we were called New River at the time. And as a church, we went through a whole lot, a whole lot of transition and different things happening that led us to the point in 2019 where we were adopted by High Ridge Church. And I am now the pastor of a High Ridge Church just like I had dreamed to do. And God is so cool the way he works. But the reason I tell you all of that, is because we are the beneficiary of another church's generosity. To just be transparent and frank, to continue doing ministry at the level we were doing, somebody had to step in and help, or we're going to have to scale way, 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 way back. And so another church in Fort Worth, Texas decided, hey, we want it not to slow down, but we actually want it to expand in minerals, and they gave towards a city that they don't even live in so that the kingdom of God could be advanced. And so as I talk to you today about heart for the house, as I talk to you about finances and generosity, I'm talking to you through the lens that this is mu something much bigger than ourselves. And there are other places like Mineral Wells where people need a church that loves Jesus and that wants to expand the kingdom of God and that is generous and is willing to pour in whatever they can to help make his name famous. And so my hope today is that we would pray about our part in the vision of High Ridge Church. Let me pray for us this morning. Lord, I pray that you would do only what you can do, Lord. I pray that you would move. I pray that you would capture our hearts. And I pray that you would reveal to us our part in all of this, Lord. 
It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I want to start here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. To who? Everyone. And especially to those who are of the household of faith. See, when I began to study this verse, the Greek text actually implies finances. So when it says, let us do good to everyone, it says, let's do everything good we possibly can, even if it comes to helping them with our finances. So today I talk to you about heart for the house because we have an opportunity and we have this opportunity once a year to step into what God is calling us to do to advance the kingdom of God and to, to step into the vision of the house and see what our part is. And so here's the thing. I just want to ask you four questions today. I want to ask you four questions and allow the Lord to speak to you. So Proverbs chapter 11 verse 25 says this. Those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be saturated with favor. The Hebrew phrase here literally means the soul of blessing will grow fat. Translation is when we begin to bless others that we will have more favor than we could ever possibly fathom with the Lord. And so the first question I want to ask you is this, is who are you living for today? Who are you living for today? And I want you to, to see where you're at. Are, are you living for the world or are you living to reach the world? Are you living for the world or are you living to reach the world? Because there is a difference some of us are living to just get by, and some of us can't get past ourselves, and some of us are hopefully that we think beyond that, but we, have, we really struggle uh, in the church today with this self mindset. Proof, right? Like when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you think of? Is it you or somebody else? You're thinking, I need to get up and I need at least two cups of coffee and don't anybody talk to me before then uh, because they are going to get the wrath put on them, right? That's how, that's how we wake up. It's easy to think about self. But you were designed to think beyond yourself and to think bigger picture. So here's the thing. Imagine if Jesus would have just thought about his self. See, the God of the universe stepped out of heaven, and he stepped into humanity, and he was fully God, and he was fully man. In his entire life here, his entire ministry here, what did he do? He thought about me, and he thought about you. Because at any moment, if on that cross, if he would have decided, like, hey, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna stop thinking about them and think about himself, he wouldn't have stayed there. But yet he willingly took on that death for you and for me. So I want to ask you today, what are you living for today? Because if you're living for Jesus, it should be bigger than just about ourself. Once you have Jesus, you should be thinking about others and how you can advance the kingdom of God. Deuteronomy Chapter 15, verses 7 through 8 says this. If among you, one of your brothers should become poor in any of your towns within your land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother, but you shall open your hand to let him and lend him sufficient for his need, whatever it may be. The second question I want to ask you today, church, is this, is how big are you thinking? How big are you thinking small picture versus big picture? Do you think the disciples realized how big they were going to be used when they first started following Jesus? They had no clue. They just said yes to Jesus. And then the, the picture of what was at stake become much clearer to them the more and more they walked with them. Some of us, our picture is like this. We can only think about us. Some of us can't get past our family. 
Some of us can't get past our, our city. Some of us can't get past the great state of Texas, right? Some of us can't get past this nation, but God wants you to expand your thinking. He wants you to dream big, and he wants you to think bigger today. Because the disciples, as they walked with Jesus, the vision became clearer. The longer you walk with Jesus, you should want to see more people come to know Jesus as your Lord and as their Lord and Savior. And that should be, become in your heart and it should resonate in your heart. And we should be big picture thinkers and think about, hey, what am I doing? What is my part to advance the kingdom of God? I don't know if you know this or not, but we have a nation that is divided right now. We have a, 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 a country that is divided, and you know who the author of division is? It's the enemy. And as the church, we are to be the ultimate unifiers, and we are to walk in unity, and we are to bring Jesus to the land. And so if our picture is very, very small, how can we ever change this world that needs changing? God wants to change this world, and he wants to bring peace and unity to it, and he wants to do it through you. How big are you thinking? And what is your part in all of this? Luke chapter 16, verses 10 and 11 says this. The one who faithfully manages the little he has been given will be prompted and trusted with greater responsibilities. But those who cheat with the little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the internal treasures of the spiritual world? The third thing I want to ask you is this, is how are you managing what he has given you? How are you managing what he has given to you? I want to ask you this, is it yours or is it his? Is it yours or is it his? See, generosity is realizing that it's not just about you. That people actually matter. That life is at stake, that eternity is at stake, and it actually matters. How are you managing what he has given to you? Are you allowing him to, to, to guide you in all of your steps, or are you holding back? Are you holding on to something? How are you? I read this right here in Luke 16, and he's saying, listen, a lot of you are asking me for more, but I need to begin to trust you with what I've given you before I could ever give you more. If you want the more, you've got to be faithful with what you have before God could ever trust you with more. I want to give you some spiritual growth track uh, stats that are happening here that have happened this year in 2021 so far at High Ridge Church Mineral Wells. We have had 384 salvations this year at this campus alone, praise God. We have had over 80 people, 80, 84 people get baptized this year here in this room at this campus. We've had 85 groups get started this year. We've had 43 people join our church. We've had 86 people step into serving. We've had 44 people step into leadership. Imagine more places experiencing God like we have in Mineral Wells, Texas. Imagine God moving in other places just like he is moving here where there are cities that, that, that desperately need Jesus. Imagine God moving into those cities and doing exactly what he is doing right here. But how can he give us the more? How can we step into that if we aren't first managing what he's given us to begin with? See, this dream, this vision that we have, we need everybody to, to be a part. And then I'm going to close with this. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, it says this. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The fourth thing I want to ask you today is this. If you don't get anything else today, I want you to really ask yourself this. Where is your heart? Is it fully his, 
or do you struggle? What's not submitted to him? In years of, of doing ministry and, and, and seeing life change happen, I've seen many, many people want more and, and they want to see God use them in a powerful, powerful, powerful way. But when it gets to the point, oh no, the pastor's talking about finances. That's when we hit the brakes. And I want you to know today that that's a heart issue. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus talks about money twice as much as he talks about heaven and hell. Why is that? Because he knows what gets a hold of our hearts. And for a lot of us, our finances, our money, has become the Lord of our life. And if Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And we have to trust him with every single thing that we have. See, this word tithe does not mean to give like we think it means. It actually means one-tenth. It means to give one-tenth. It's a, and it's not a suggestion. It's actually a biblical mandate. And why is that? Because the Lord can do it with or without you, right? He's God. He's all-powerful. He can make it happen. But he wants your whole and I don't know about you, but I would rather live with 90% blessed than 100% not. And so how are you managing what he has given you? How big are you thinking? How, how, how do you want to live out this life? Because we have stepped into this world in the year 2021 because God has allowed us and he has put us here in this moment, in this point of time to make a difference in the kingdom of God. And so what is your part today? Where is your heart at? How do you want to advance the kingdom of God? Because we're a part of a church that wants to strengthen people for life to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and to make a difference. And then we want to get people into the growth track, and we want to see them go from salvation to baptisms into a group that has life-giving community and see them step into membership, and then we want to see them step into serving, and then we want to see them step into leadership and do exactly what God has purposed and designed them to do. And we get to be a part of something special that has expanded us all the way out to even California because God wants to move in a powerful way and he wants to move through a church that is faithful, that trusts him, and that allows him to move in a big, big way that trusts him. But it takes a step of faith. So I want to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes today. And I want you to just begin to ask the Lord, what is your part? What is it that he would have me do? Who would say here in the room, I struggle with trusting God with my finances? Would you raise your hand? I struggle with trusting God with my finances. I worry, I count. I struggle to trust him in this area, and I want to trust him in everything. Who would say that I want to be part of the vision of expanding the kingdom of God? Would you just raise your hand? I want to trust God with my finances. I want him to use me in a powerful way, in whatever way he wants to use me today. Many hands raised in the room. I just want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I just pray right now that you would speak to us and that you would move exactly how you want us to move, Lord. And I just pray right now that you would just begin to allow us to trust you, to give you our hearts, Lord Jesus. And I just pray right now that you would speak, that we would not move on behalf of what Ryan Sims is telling them to do, but that we would move on the behalf of the one true God speaking directly to us today. 
Lord, I just pray that you would speak. I pray that you would anoint. I pray, Lord, that the chains or bondage that we've been holding on to, that we would let go of that today. And that we would just not trust you with most things, but that we would trust you with all things today, Lord. In Jesus' name. With all heads bowed down, no one looking around. Maybe you're here today and you say, you know, that's awesome and all. I want to trust God with everything, but I don't know that I've ever given him my heart. I don't know that he's Lord of my life. And if I'm being honest today, maybe you hear you say, there's this void. There's something missing. I know that there's more. And I just want to give my heart to God today. I want to know that I know that I know that I got to spend eternity in his heaven. That I want to walk with Jesus. That I want to give him my heart. And I don't want to have any doubt in my mind. And I want to know that I know that I know that he is Lord. If that's you today, you want to settle the issue. You don't want to have any doubts. Pray this with me. Jesus I make you Lord of my life. Jesus, I choose to trust you right now. Jesus, I turn from my ways. Forgive me of my sin. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for raising from the grave. And thank you for just now hearing me. With all heads bowed down, no one looking around. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I just want to celebrate with you today. If you just prayed with me, you just made Jesus Lord of your life, would you just look at me, give me a quick wave? Just look at me real quick, give me a quick little wave. You just made Jesus Lord of your life. Got you back there. Anybody else? Got you right there. Anybody else? Just look at me, give me a quick little wave. You just prayed to make Jesus Lord of your life. Anybody else? Just look at me, give me a quick little wave. All righty. Praise God. Well, everybody, look at me. We had three people just make decisions for Christ. Praise God. And I'm so excited about all the decisions that are happening today, but we're not done yet. If you would, focus your attention to the screen. We are a church that loves to strengthen people for life. We enjoy helping people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. This is why we exist. High Ridge Church is all about people. We're all about strengthening and encouraging and helping people to have a blessed and abundant life. In this next step of our church, welcome to the family, Parker County. High Ridge Parker County will be a highly visible church on I-20 and will be a beacon of light to the entire community. Guests will enter and be welcomed into our lobby, a great place to get connected at our information center and grab a cup of coffee and then meet up with friends and family before heading into the worship center for a worship service experience. In phase one of High Ridge Parker County, our worship center will be on the west side of the building just across from our kids' wing. Guests will enter through the lobby and be welcomed to join in a faith-filled worship service and then have the opportunity to take their next steps in their relationship with Christ. With seating for over 400 people, this worship center will be a place where so many are strengthened and encouraged every week. Across from the worship center is our kids area. Here parents can check their children in, drop them off for a safe, fun experience where they will learn about God's love and discover purpose for their lives. Each room is specifically designed to provide an engaging environment for kids to gather and receive the highest quality of care as well as an exciting lesson from God's Word taught right at their age level. We have an area specifically designed for school-aged children to engage in an energy-packed worship experience and an encouraging word each week. We are excited about how many kids will take their first step of faith beginning a life-giving relationship with Jesus right here in these rooms. 
At the end of the West Wing hallway, doors open to a beautiful outdoor pavilion and sports yard, the perfect place to find community around common interests, develop and strengthen family connections, and facilitate conversation and deeper relationships with our Higher Ridge family, as well as opportunities to serve our broader community by investing in the next generation. As our Parker County campus grows into phase two, the entire West Wing will be dedicated to the next generation. The worship center will be transformed into a multi-purpose area specifically designed for youth, inspiring and developing the next generation in faith. Our church life will expand into our brand new worship center on the east side of our campus building. This new worship center will be able to accommodate a seating capacity of up to a thousand people providing an opportunity for growing attendance in our Sunday services, space for multi-campus gatherings and conferences, and most importantly, more and more people coming to encounter the power of a living God. We are High Ridge, a family of churches, strengthening people for life in Fort Worth, Longview, Graham, Mineral Wells, Rockland, California, and next in Parker County. I'm standing here in one of the theaters that used to be a part of the City Lights Theater Complex where people came to be entertained. But it is now High Ridge Church where people are gonna come and experience life change, where people will come to exalt and magnify the Lord, where marriages will be healed, where families will be restored, where joy will be what people experience and encouragement will be what they hear. Well, there will be impartations of life in the worship and as the word is taught and as people are prayed for at the end of the service at the front. I'm in a place that's gonna be a place used by Almighty God to not just change your life, but to change the lives of people around your life. And I'm believing will change the whole culture of Parker County. It's gonna be awesome. And I can't wait for you to be a part. Can we give some God some praise this morning, everybody? Man. So uh, I just want to give you an opportunity today. We've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks, about how we can partner. And if God is going to have you uh, partner with us financially or if God's going to have you pray, I just want to give you an opportunity to see what your part is today. So if you would, grab one of these heart for the house from the seat back pocket in front of you. And I just want you to ask the Lord, what is your part? Maybe you haven't begun that journey of, of tithing yet, and you just want to begin to start right here in this house by sowing seed in this house by being faithful in tithing. Maybe you want to tithe uh, to mineral wells and give an additional percentage to go to heart for the house and expanding the kingdom. Maybe you want to give a one-time offering today to sow into Parker County in High Ridge, California. Or maybe you want to make a year-long pledge. I don't know what it is the Lord wants you to do today, and I'm not here to pressure you into anything. I just want you to ask the Lord what is your part, and if he tells you to do anything, to obey. So right now, I'm just going to pray, and I'm going to step aside for about 30 seconds and allow the Lord to speak to you as you begin to grab these and fill these out or grab giving envelopes to, to give here in a moment. So Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would speak to us, that you would ask us what our part, that you would tell us what our part is, Lord, that we would be able to hear it clearly, Lord, that we would begin to pray in how we can advance the kingdom of God and how we can, just like how we trust God with our time, our talents, Lord, that we would trust him with our resources and our finances, Lord. I pray that you would move in a powerful way and that you would speak right now. In Jesus' name, I'm just gonna give us 30 seconds for you to ask the Lord, what is your part?
Lord, we thank you for what you're doing at High Ridge Church and that we get to be part of a big family where life change is happening, where expectation is happening, where expansion is happening. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for increase. We thank you for favor, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing here at High Ridge Church, Lord, and all you're going to do in this city and then all you're going to do in all the other High Ridge Church campuses. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. So right now, our host team is going to pass our containers and you can drop your cards or your uh, tithes and offerings today. And as they do that, the worship team is going to begin to sing and you can worship as the containers pass you. Thank you so much. give the Lord some praise today, everybody. Man, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about all that God is doing in the life of our church. So today alone here at this campus, we had 24 people be water baptized. We had 11 people say yes to Jesus for the first time. 
And I am just so excited about all that God is doing and is yet to do. I don't know about you, but I'm increasing my expectation of what he can do when a room full of people step into and say, hey, I wanna be a part of advancing the kingdom of God and I don't care what it looks like. And so thank you so much for being a generous church and thank you so much for stepping into all that he is doing in this place. I wanna let you know that we have membership class next week. Uh, if you have never gone through our membership and you're ready to call yourself a High Ridgian for life, you can sign up at highridgemw.com. And we would love for you to sign up so that you can find out more about our church, that you can find out what our vision is, what our beliefs are, all that good stuff. We would love for you to sign up and you can sign up today at highridgemw.com. Also, lastly is this, if you made a decision for Christ today, if you made a decision recently, I don't think we're done baptizing people today. At least my faith won't allow me to think that, right? And so we've had 24 people take that step today. You say, hey, listen, I've accepted Jesus. I've accepted him recently. I accepted him years ago, but I've never been water baptized. I wanna tell you today is your day. Today is your day. It's not too late. You're saying, hey, Ryan, I don't have clothes. I don't, how am I gonna do that? Hey, we've got shirts, shorts, towels, and all of the excuses covered. We wanna see you take your next step. And so if you are here today and you say, listen, I know that I'm supposed to respond. Listen, hey, I know I'm supposed to do this today. We have our baptism team, Tracy and Kelsey are, are standing in the back. They've got blue t-shirts on. They would love for you to take that next step today. So if that's something you're interested in today, you can find one of them as you exit today and we will stay here and celebrate your decision. And so I'm so excited about that. Well, I hope you're strengthened today. If you need prayer today at all, we're gonna ask our prayer team to come to the front. We believe in the power of prayer. If you want some prayer today for any area of your life, we would love for you to come up here and get prayed for today. Well, I hope you were strengthened. I hope you were encouraged. I love seeing life change and being part of a huge vision. I hope you have a fantastic day. Go and watch the Cowboys win. You're dismissed.